Hello, church family. This is Pastor Daryl, and I'm coming to you at about 3.30 uh, Tuesday afternoon with uh, some words of encouragement. Uh, Pastor Danny and I were talking this morning, and he said, uh, it's been a while since you did uh, a video and uh, of words of encouragement and hope, and I said, you're exactly right. So uh, as I'm home studying in my little home office this afternoon uh, for next Sunday's message, I wanted to take a few minutes and open God's Word and uh, share some encouragement with you. The other day I was thinking and, and about our church and I came to the conclusion that I miss you and I miss uh, seeing my church family. Uh, I, I get to see my, uh, my family family, uh, my uh, wife and my kids and all of that every day and uh, but I do not get to see my church family, and I miss you, I miss seeing you, I miss talking with you, uh, interacting with you, and to be honest, I miss teaching you. Uh, I've, I've continued teaching you, but, uh, you know, I'm talking to a camera every time when I do that, and I miss the human interaction and the human element of it. So I love you, and uh, I miss you, and we pray uh, that that soon uh, we can meet once again. Uh, one of the things that I've been doing around the church is using some of my uh, handyman and carpentry skills to do some odd jobs. And this morning, I stopped by Rusty's on the way into church, and I put on my mask. I've been wearing my mask, and I, I always feel like I'm going in for a, a holdup or something when I put my mask on. But anyway, I put my mask on, went into Rusty's, and I saw Joyce Poole. And uh, many of you, church family, know uh, Butch and Joyce Poole, and and talked to her in a safe distance. She had her mask on. I had our mask on, and we talked for a couple of minutes. I asked how they were doing, and she gave me an update. Uh, but it made me realize I hadn't seen Joyce probably since the beginning of March, and that's the way it is with uh, all of my church family. So I love you and miss you. But as I thought about that, you know, I thought about the Apostle Paul. First of all, I'm not the Apostle Paul. <laughs> I'm not claiming that, but I thought about the Apostle. The Apostle Paul in the New Testament wrote 13 letters, and the 13 letters that he wrote comprise uh, 13 of the 27 books that we have in the New Testament. So he was a very prolific writer. Most of those are short letters, and he wrote to individuals like uh, Timothy and Titus and Philemon, uh, but he also mostly wrote to churches. And isn't that good? And many times these were churches that he had firsthand knowledge of or churches that he had started. Uh, so this was Paul's life. After Paul came uh, to Christ in the book of Acts, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ gave him a mission. He said, you know, you're going to be my witness to the Gentiles. And that's exactly what the Apostle Paul, he spent the balance of his life uh, taking the good news about Jesus and his salvation to the non-Jewish people. And so he was in uh, much of Asia Minor and uh, mod what we call modern day uh, Europe. And he uh, was sharing the gospel and many places that the apostle went, people believed and a church was born. I think just about every place that he went that he preached the gospel, as we read in the book of Acts, a church was uh, started and began. The people naturally gathered. And so uh, Paul, after a while, he would move on to the next place because, you know, that was his calling in life. Many times he had to move on because there was such strong opposition to his message among uh, Jewish people and sometimes the Romans that they would drive him out or they would try to kill him. And so he would have to go on. And so many times what Paul would do is he would write a letter. Now, we can't meet face-to-face, -face and, and, and uh, I've sent out a few cards over the last few weeks, but thankfully, we are not just limited to letter writing. Uh, we can do phone calls, we could do FaceTime, we can do Facebook Messenger, we can do live videos, and people can see us instantly. So what a blessing that we can communicate. But Paul had to send letters uh, to these churches uh, because, one, he wanted to know how they were doing, Two, they were in his heart. And three, he wanted them to know that he was praying for them and that he hadn't forgotten and he couldn't wait till he could meet together with them once again. 
Sound familiar? Well, let me read uh, one of these little snippets to you that we find. You can find it multiple times in the scripture. Uh, Timothy, we're going to read here in, in 1 Thessalonians. You can read about it in Philippians, in the book of Romans. Uh, Paul would say time and again, this is how I miss you, church. And so notice here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, and I'm going to read it right off my computer screen to you, and I'll skip around a little bit. But I'm going to begin with 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning with verse 17. And this is through the end of the chapter. He says, Dear brothers and sisters, after we separated from you for a little while, though our hearts never left you, we tried very hard to come back because of our intense longing to see you again. We wanted very much to come to you, and I, Paul, tried again and again but Satan prevented us. After all, what gives us hope and joy? And what will be our proud reward and crown as we stand before our Lord Jesus when he returns? It is you. Yes, you are our pride and joy. So we're going to skip a little bit. And he had gotten a report from Timothy that the church in Thessalonica was standing firm and were we're following the Lord. And so this is, you know, Paul's response to that. He says in verse 11 of chapter 3, uh, May God our Father and our Lord Jesus bring us to you very soon. And may the Lord make your love for one another and for all. All people grow and overflow just as our love for you overflows. May he, as a result, make your heart strong, blameless, and holy as you stand before God our Father. And when the Lord Jesus comes again with all of his holy people, amen. He also said in verse 10 uh, that he thanked God for them. And night and day he prayed earnestly for them, asking God to let us see you again and fill in the gaps for your faith. And you know what? These words that I have just read from the Apostle Paul are my thoughts exactly. I am praying for you. I should pray for you more, but I'm praying for you, and I long to see you, and I love you as my church family, and I want to help you in your faith, and I know you want to help me in my faith, and I want you to be encouraged but also notice a couple things that Paul said. He says, you know, continue in your love for each other. And I know some of you are having a little bit of interaction through the phone or dropping by or something like that from a distance. Uh, continue to love each other. Continue to check on each other. If you're a Sunday school teacher and you're listening to me today, check on your Sunday school class. Uh, if you have people that, that you... Uh, are friends with at the church, and I know you that you do, uh, call them, check on them, see if everything's okay. And uh, deacons, do the work of a deacon, uh, check on uh, those folks that uh, God lays on your heart and those that may be in the uh, most need. So let your love overflow for each other and for all people uh, that you may be around. And lastly, he says, you know, we want to be blameless we want to be strong and we want to be holy because one day we're going to stand before the Lord. So in this time, uh, continue to live holy lives, continue to love one another, continue to be blameless because folks, it is worth it. And uh, we will all uh, be together again one day, but more importantly, we will be with the Lord and we want him to be pleased with us, don't we? So I want you to be encouraged today, love you, praying for you. I know I've said I love you many times, but I hope that you know that, and I'm praying for you. And feel free, if you have a prayer request, that um, send it my way, send me a text, give me a phone call, some of you have. We'll have prayer meeting tomorrow night at 7 p.m., and Donna and I will be live with that. Uh, Pastor Danny uh, will have youth that start at 6.30 tomorrow night, so youth be ready for that on uh, Zoom. He does that every every week at 6.30. And then uh, also, uh, we are preparing for next Sunday, and we're continuing in First Peter. And uh, we're looking in, in chapter 2 as we continue on is, you know, should we 
obey the government. And that's what Peter addresses. So that's a timely thing. And so we'll be uh, looking in 1 Peter chapter 2, starting around verse 15, and read those few verses and notice what the Lord has to say to you. But anyway, church family, let me pray for you and with you right now. So will you pray with me? We'll pray for each other uh, that God would allow us uh, to meet again together soon. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for my church family. Lord, you know that I love them and I miss them. And Father, we get to see uh, each other from a distance on occasion uh, as individuals. But Father, we don't get to gather together. And Lord, we miss that. I miss that. And I miss, uh, Father, uh, the church that, that you have led me to, to shepherd. And I pray, God, that you would be with them, that you would encourage them. Uh, Father, I thank you that many of them are serving one another through making masks and helping out and doing many things, God. And I pray that you would bless them. I pray for our teachers right now, as uh, I know uh, uh, that it's a struggle for them to teach from a distance and, and, and from home, and they'd much rather be in the classroom with their children. And, and so, Lord, many of them are putting in more hours than they did before, and I pray that you'd bless them and you'd be with them, and God, strengthen them for the task at hand. I pray for our moms and, and, and dads that are helping out their students at home, uh, that you would uh, give them the patience and the endurance, uh, that, God, that you would uh, help them with insight into lessons that they may not have studied in 20 or 30 years. And, Lord, I pray for those that are separated from their loved ones because of this, grandparents that don't, don't get to see their grandkids or the other way around. Uh, Father, that you, uh, Lord, will let them know uh, that you are, uh, Father, looking out for them, and that, Father, that you will bring a reunion. reunion. Uh, I pray for my family that you would keep them safe, that you would keep them blameless and holy to the time of Christ, and our love for one another would grow all the more. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you, family. Uh, you take care and uh, send your prayer requests for tomorrow night our way so we can lift you up. Uh, get plenty of exercise. I've been on more walks the last six weeks and uh, so should be in really good shape. So enjoy this beautiful spring we're having and God bless you. Bernice, good to see that you've uh, logged in. Uh, we will pray for Barbara and Hickson and uh, Lord lift her up and we'll put her on the prayer list for tomorrow night and God bless you and we will see you tomorrow evening at seven o'clock. God bless.